Whew. Who wants a calm Doberman? I know I do. A calm Doberman makes for just a really happy life. And a few weeks ago on this channel, you met a Doberman named Apollo, and we referred to him as the Go Anywhere Doberman because, well, this dog is just the calmest, most relaxed dog you've ever seen in any situation. And that's what stood out to me the most about him and to most people when they first get to meet him. I mean, this dog can relax and chill out on a boat ride. On a golf cart flying down the street. Or in the middle of some loud, just chaotic time with kids running around all over the place. And this dog just sleeps right through thunderstorms and fireworks all day long, no problem at all. His rock solid temperament is why we made him the Doberman Breed Ambassador at Doberman Planet. And, but what in the world did his owner, Lauren, do to make such a calm dog? Lauren, would you please help us out here? Give us your best advice, absolute best tips you could possibly muster for creating what you created, a Doberman with such an amazing temperament. Please, Lauren, help us. Hi, John. Yes, I could definitely help you out there. So here are the five best pieces of advice I can give you to raise a calm Doberman in any situation. One of the first things you want to do to raise a calm Doberman is to bring them everywhere with you. You want to get them exposed to different things, different sights, smell different things, to hear new things from a young age. That way you can get them acclimated to be comfortable when, they're, when they later enter their adult years. Apollo is in the car with us almost every single day. We go to the school car line to drop my kids off at school. We go to Home Depot to pick up stuff for, uh, for the house. We're, we go to Petco or the local pet store just to pick up his favorite treats. We go to the beach, the, the walking trails, everywhere with Apollo. And because of this, Apollo is so familiar with so many people, uh, social situations, when he hears certain things, it really doesn't phase him because he knows this stuff already. He's already familiar with it. When Apollo was a young puppy, he soon learned that it was not going to be a quiet household. With three young children in the house, there is just always something going on between the kids' toys, the loud movies, and kids just coming over to play with my kids. There's just something always going on. But when Apollo was a young puppy, we made sure that he was going to be comfortable with all of this. Uh, you know, we'd learn to recognize if Apollo was uncomfortable or if he just didn't like the loud noise. Uh, you know, I would have to tell my children, okay, just, you know, lower your voices, lower the movie, go play with your toys in a different room. We wanted to make sure that Apollo was going to be 100% comfortable with everything that was going on in the house. And as he grew up, he just was exposed to that gradually and all the time that even now the kids could shoot Nerf guns across the house or drive their remote control cars around the house. And, he, and Apollo will just lay there because he knows their toys, that he knows that it's safe. Everything going on in the house has really helped him adapt to outside of the house as well when he sees other kids playing. Did you ever hear that saying that a tired dog is a good dog? Well, I have to say, and I think most Doberman owners will agree with me that that is a very true statement. When Apollo was a young puppy, we learned quickly that he had a very strong athletic drive. He always wanted to be doing something. He didn't care what it was, whether it was running around, active playing, uh, doing like a, a mental stimulation puzzle. He just wanted to do something. So we actually transitioned our backyard into like a makeshift soccer field. We have nice, a fresh sod in our yard. And the kids play soccer and we play ball with Apollo and he loves it. We're out there almost every day. And it's something that Apollo needs to get out. He's got so much energy. He's just got that, that working drive. But since he's a, a, a companion pet for us, you know, he, he has the ability to be a working dog, but he's, and he's got all that energy for it. And of course the high potential, but we get that outlet. Um, we provide that outlet in different ways. So we play ball with him. We play tug of war. Uh, he plays Frisbee once in a while. And we, of course we go to the beach. He runs around with the other dogs. He is always physically active every day. And uh, Apollo is a runner. So we train for our 5k races. We run in a race you know, maybe a couple times a month. And we always take long walks on the walking trails just around town. Apollo is always physically active doing something. But of course, we don't push it too far. I only do as much as he can handle. 
And you always want to be safe, of course, while you're doing that. Puppy socialization is so incredibly important. And I know John has already done a video on this and expressed the fact that you need to get your Doberman exposed to things from a young age, from about eight weeks of age to 16 weeks of age. That is the critical window for social uh, exposure for Dobermans, especially for all puppies, really. You want to help build that foundation for what they are exposed to in a puppyhood and to, for how they respond when they later become an adult. You want your dog to see new things, smell new things, hear new things, meet new people, and just all of that all wrapped up into one. If they're exposed to it at a younger age, they're going to be okay with it when they're an adult and you want, and that's going to keep them calm because they're already familiar with it. One thing about Dobermans that I've personally learned is that they have an amazing connection with their owners. If you can establish that companionship bond with your Doberman, then chances are if you feel something emotional wise, your Doberman is going to sense and feel that too. So if you're in a comfortable environment, you're just lazing it up on the couch, just having a good old Sunday morning, chances are your dog's just gonna, you know, lay around and just be comfortable with you. But in certain situations, if you're ever in a, in a situation where you, you get nervous or you get tensed or you just feel like something is wrong, chances are your Doberman is gonna feel that as well. One quick example, I live in an area of South Florida we, where we have a lot of native wildlife and some of that wildlife is really, really big. So I was walking Apollo out on the leash and we came across a bear. Yes, we have bears here. And of course, when I saw this bear, it was in the distance. The bear didn't even see us the whole time we were there. I'm walking Apollo early in the morning. We see this bear. I immediately stopped walking and I, I tensed up a little bit. And as soon as I stopped walking and got tense, Apollo just ears up and was just kind of on guard. He just was looking around, trying to, and he was, I, I even noticed him smelling the air. He might've smelled the bear, I'm not sure, but he knew that when I stopped and got a little nervous, he stopped and just responded the same exact way. So of course we made a U-turn and just went back the other way. But it was just seeing Apollo act like that. I mean, what other dog really has a connection to their owner like that? I mean, I felt nervous and a little, and I got tense and he did the same exact thing. I didn't say a word. I didn't give a command. I didn't do anything. It's just how I was actually feeling. Since Apollo is not a breeding dog, we had him neutered uh, younger than the age of two. And there were significant behavior changes that we personally noticed in Apollo. Some of those included uh, marking and the obsessive sniffing. When we had him neutered, he was doing all of that. He would take a five minute walk and turn it into 30 minutes. And that was just because, you know, the, the testosterone and going through puberty and he was just all that sexual driven hormones. When we had Apollo neutered, it was like a light switch. All of that immediately turned off. Uh, Apollo didn't want to mark anymore. He didn't want to do any more of the sniffing. I mean, it was, it was great. And one of the other behaviors that we noticed that is that he became more focused on training and just being one-on-one -on -one with myself and all my family members. It really did change his behavior. It really calmed him down because he wasn't like trying to go and compete with all these other dogs outside. He would just go take a walk and that was it. It, it was blissful really. So neutering like I said, just for our, my personal experience, neutering was very beneficial uh, under the age of two because Apollo did not develop any of those habits and he did not bring any of those uh, sexually driven habits into adulthood. Having a family dog that can just hear all this craziness of kids and just loud noises and you know, fireworks, for example, and he's just so cool and calm and his temperament just remains level. It is really, really cool. And th the fact that a Doberman can do this is just amazing. And Dobermans are great because if you teach them early, they are so incredibly smart that they're going to learn that, Hey, this is, this is not bad. This is cool. I've already seen this when I was little. 
it is not so bad in adulthood. But you as the owner, you have to make that a priority. And you are gonna, and if you do and it's successful, your dog is just gonna be so cool and just very calm in any unpredictable situation. Guys, in my opinion, out of all the pieces of advice that Lauren gave us, the best is to act how you want your doorman to act. I can't stress that one enough. It's huge. These dogs are different than so many other breeds because they read their owner's emotions so well. So if you want a super calm doorman, just use that instinct that this breed has to your advantage. Be calm and relax yourself. If you want to pass a loud leaf blower without your doorman freaking out, be relaxed about it yourself and calm shoulders down and just walk on by and just trust that your doorman's going to read that. Trust me, if you tense up even a little bit or anticipate there's gonna be a problem with that leaf blower, there will be a problem, trust me, because your doorman will read you and they'll get very protective. This is one reason I don't think that doormans really need to be protection trained specifically because they can read you. And if you're in danger or fearful, they're gonna step up and do what they're bred to do. And guys, if you wanna talk a little bit more about neutering and how that might affect the behavior of your dog, since Lauren did discuss this a decent amount, take a look up in the corner of the screen. That video should be popping up there as well. So you kinda of get an idea of what to expect when it comes to behavior and neutering. And lastly, guys, if you wanna check out a really cool exercise video, and we all know that exercise is like, the key to a relaxed Doberman. Uh, it's a really great video that I did with my Doberman Arlo where I exercised him for an entire day and I tracked all his stats, his miles, his steps walked with a really cool gadget, the smart collar, and go through all the stats. It was actually probably the funnest video I've ever made in my opinion. It should be popping up right there on your screen. So definitely go take a look at that video. It was just a ton of fun. I'll, I'll wait right here while you go check that out. Go ahead. It's, it's actually is a really cool video. I'll hang out. Go on, you can click it.